It's time to download that antivirus software because Silver Wolf is here and she's ready to input your weaknesses. We are hours away from her release and it's time for you to know exactly how to play and build her. Every ability, every relic, every stat, and every team is going to be covered in this Ultimate Silver Wolf guide. Feel free to use this one sheet after the video to refer back to when you need information about the guide and hit subscribe now so you don't miss another video. If you're ready to game, then I'm ready to guide. Holy shit, that was cringe as fuck. All right, now starting with the kit breakdown for Silver Wolf. At basic attack level 6, Silver Wolf will deal 100% quantum damage to a single target. Silver Wolf's skill is her main ability that allows her to stand out in Hawkeye Star Rail's cast of characters. She has an 85% chance to implant a weakness upon an enemy. This weakness is picked from the types currently on your own team. For instance, in a team with Silver Wolf, Asta, Himeko, and Natasha, Silver Wolf can implant quantum, fire, or physical weakness. If a weakness is implanted at level 10, this will also reduce the specific implanted type's resistance by 20%. Silver Wolf has a base chance of 100% to also reduce all type resistances by an additional 10% at level 10 for two turns. This ability puts Silver Wolf into the supportive role where she spends her time applying weaknesses and increasing the overall team damage through the resistance penetration. Currently, Silver Wolf is the only character in the game with this ability ability to change an enemy weakness type. Silver Wolf's ultimate deals a massive 380% quantum damage to a single target. This ability has a 100% base chance to decrease the target's defense by 45% for 3 turns at level 10. This ability can be compared to Pila's ultimate ability where she reduces the enemy team's defense by a total of 40% at level 10. The difference between these two abilities is Pila's can hit the entire enemy team and Silver Wolf's is a single target ability with an additional 5% more defense reduction at level 10. Silver Wolf's scaling on the ability, though, is a lot higher than Pila's, meaning her ultimate will deal significantly more damage compared to her. Silver Wolf's talent has a 72% base chance to activate every time she attacks at level 10. If successful, Silver Wolf will implant one of three bugs, each of these bugs providing a different debuff. The three debuffs are reducing enemy attack, reducing enemy defense, or reducing enemy speed. Silver Wolf's technique deals 80% quantum damage to all enemies and lowers toughness of all enemies by 60 regardless of type weaknesses. Silver Wolf's three main traces are as follows. First is Generate, which increases the duration of all bugs implanted by Silver Wolf by one additional turn. Generate also gives Silver Wolf a 65% chance to implant a bug upon an enemy when they are weakness broken. The next trace is called Inject, which increases the weakness implant debuff by an additional turn. And the final trace is called Side Note, which increases all type resistance debuffs of Silver Wolf's skill by an additional 3%. This only triggers though if the enemy has 3 or more debuffs on them. When it comes to prioritizing traces and abilities, Silver Wolf's skill and ultimate should be the main focus. Leveling up Silver Wolf's skill will increase the likelihood of applying a new type weakness as well as increase the all type resistance penetration percentage. These levels will also increase the damage that this skill deals. Leveling up Silver Wolf's ultimate will increase its total damage and more importantly the likelihood of applying the defense debuff as well as a total percentage of of defense reduced. Beyond those two abilities, Silver Wolf's talent and basic attack aren't a high priority. When it comes to traces, inject is the main priority, allowing weakness types applied to last longer. The next would be generate, which allows bugs to be implanted upon weakness breaking, and finally side note, increasing overall team damage slightly. Silver Wolf has a few Eidolons that are rather strong. Her E1 increases her energy regeneration upon using her ultimate. Silver Wolf will gain 7 energy for every debuff on the enemy up to a maximum of 35 total energy. This is a strong Eidolon as it allows Silver Wolf a better uptime on her defense debuff. Silver Wolf's E2 reduces the enemy team's effect resistance by 20%. When taking Silver Wolf E2, you'll be able to build more personal damage. Usually when building her, you take effect hit rate on the chest relic, but instead when taking the E2 Eidolon, you can take crit rate or crit damage. Do keep in mind with Eidolon 2, you will have to build effect hit rate more within your substats than compared to the regular Silver Wolf build, but overall it will increase your damage when taking a crit rate or crit damage chest relic. Silver Wolf's E4 increases her ultimate's damage against enemies with lots of debuffs. The increase is 20% more quantum damage per debuff up to a total of 5 stacks. Silver Wolf's E6 is an additional increase to her personal damage even further by increasing her overall damage by 20% per debuff the enemy has. This applies to her basic attack skill and ultimate damage. Silver Wolf has two main relic set options, either the Musketeer of Wild Wheat 
said or Genius of Brilliant Stars said. The Musketeer set allows Silver Wolf to increase her speed. Taking speed on Silver Wolf not only allows her to generate more energy, but also more skill points. Silver Wolf can be a very heavy skill point spender, so increasing your speed helps Silver Wolf generate her own skill points to spend on applying her debuffs. The Musketeer set also increases her attack percent and basic attack damage, which increases her personal damage slightly. Taking the Brilliant Stars set will increase Silver Wolf's damage further and synergize directly with her abilities to apply quantum weakness upon enemies. Silver Wolf's best two-piece planar set is the Pan Galactic Commercial Enterprise set, which increases her effect hit rate, ensuring her debuff supplies to targets. Silver Wolf can take the Space Ceiling Station set to increase her own personal damage, but I wouldn't recommend this set unless you're running Silver Wolf E6. There are two stat breakdowns you can go with for Silver Wolf. The first is an effect hit rate chest, speed boots, quantum damage planar sphere, and energy recharge link rope. The substats of these should be a combination of crit rate, crit damage, speed, and attack. You should take effect hit rate in your substats, but the amount would depend on how much effect hit rate you are getting from your traces, light cones, and the relic effect sets. You should aim for a total of 110% effect hit rate from all sources. For those that do want to go on a more personal damage route, you should instead take a crit rate or crit damage chest, attack percent or speed boots, a quantum damage planar sphere, and finally an attack percent link rope. The substats in this case would still take effect hit rate and prioritize high attack percent and crit stats. Even break effect in certain team loadouts could be argued as a good choice as well in this case. Moving on finally to the light cone options, there are some great news for those pulling Silver Wolf in patch 1.1. Silver Wolf's signature light cone is obviously her best in slot, providing effect hit rate, crit rate, and also the chance to increase damage against them by 12%. The reason why this light cone is so good is because it provides stats for both Silver Wolf's supportive capabilities as well as personal damage. The next light cone I will be recommending though is thankfully the free light cone we are getting in patch 1.1 before the tutorial mission starts. This light cone is extremely strong providing insanely high effect hit rate as well as energy regeneration when attacking enemies whose weaknesses has been reduced. This light cone is such a strong option and I recommend it over the other 5 star Nihilinity light cone in the name of the world. World. This light cone, especially at its maximum, provides Silver Wolf with a lot of effect hit rate that she does need, but also a lot of energy regeneration upon hitting enemies who have their defense reduced. As you know, Silver Wolf's ultimate provides a defense reduction debuff, meaning that once Silver Wolf reduces a target's defense, she'll be able to regenerate that ultimate even faster after the first time. This light cone is even an amazing option for a character like Pila. I just wanted to mention that. In the Name of the World is still a good option for those who unfortunately miss this free light cone in patch 1.1. It will provide a great amount of effect hit rate as well as personal damage from the attack bonus. Finally, the last light cone I will be recommending is Resolution Shines as Pearls of Sweat, which is providing an additional defense debuff for your team to utilize and in increasing their overall damage. Those looking for a 3-star option can go with the Void light cone for some extra effect hit rate early on into the fight. We could spend all day going over all the teams Silver Wolf could excel in, so I'm going to be talking about some of the very best options and some general team guidelines. Number one is going to be what I call Sela Duo, and this is any team that has Sela and Silver Wolf together with an additional duo of another type. So for instance, an Ice Duo could be Pila and Japard, a Fire Duo could be Asta and Trailblazer, a Lightning Duo could be Tin Young and Bailu. The list goes on, and these teams basically pick two main types, one being Quantum and one being another. This maximizes the 50-50 chance of Silver Wolf's weakness application on her skill. Characters like Yukong work great in these teams as they buff Sela and are able to break quickly with their own abilities. Just make sure that one of these slots is a strong preservation or abundance character. The next team style I want to talk about is mono teams. That means running Silver Wolf alongside a whole team of a single type element. Currently in the game, there are only a few viable ones at this point, in my opinion. That being Mono Ice with Yan Chang, Pila, and March 7th, Mono Fire with Himeko, Asta, and Fire Trailblazer, Mono Physical with Su Shang, Clara, and Natasha. Mono Lightning with Serval, Tin Young, and Bai Lu, and possibly Mono Imaginary with Welt, Locha, and Yukong. These teams all stack an element other than Quantum on one team in order to utilize Silver Wolf's weakness debuff to its full potential. Theoretically, with this great setup, 
it would be a 75-25% chance at getting the weakness implanted that you need. But it is possible it could also be a 50-50 in getting the weakness you need just based on the total elements of the team. We aren't sure currently this has to be tested when Silverwolf releases. These teams focus on keeping enemies burned, shocked, or even frozen to keep damage pumping in and your enemies constantly interrupted. Overall though, Silverwolf is a highly flexible unit providing something in almost any team similar to Pila. The previously mentioned teams are just where I find she really shines. And that brings us to the very end of the Ultimate Silverwolf Guide. I hope you enjoyed, and if you haven't, it would mean a ton to hit that subscribe and like button as it's a perfectly free way to support what I do. If you want to support even more, feel free to hop on over to twitch.tv slash sipsipstefan to subscribe there or just watch me play 1.1. Keep me posted in the comments how your Silverwolf pulls and building goes, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.